Welcome to Gather Geeks by BizBash. I'm David Adler, and before we start, I want to introduce you to one of our fantastic sponsors, Skipster. They are the guest management platform used by top event teams for everything from guest lists to seating charts and online invitations. If you're looking for the next generation event software that helps deliver the perfect guest experience, head over to Skipster's website. It's spelled Z K I P S T E R dot com to try a free event. Are you a Okay, so we're going to... Yeah. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Editor-in-Chief Beth Kormanick. Hi, David. Hey, Beth. Here we are, another Gather Geeks. Our guests today are Ambassador Stuart Holliday, President and CEO of the Meridian International Center, and Jane Sloat, founder of the Meridian House Ball, and she has a long history of involvement in Washington's political and cultural scene. The Meridian International Center describes itself as a global leadership organization and seeks to create education, cultural, and policy programs to bring together people from around the globe and prepare leaders to deal with international issues. One of its signature events is the Meridian Ball. This is a black tie fundraiser that is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year on October 12th. It's one of the district's premier events, and we recognize it with a place on the top 100 events in Washington. And this milestone shows how it has withstood the test of time. David, part of this is a, a know your history conversation. You know, as we hear its founders were trailblazing in the idea to bring together the diplomatic corps and Washington society, but what can we learn from it and apply today? Well, I think what they do is their ball is actually the epitome of what they do in their organization. They're kind of the ultimate collaboration artist, the way I look at it. And, and the, what the ball has done is, over the test of time, has really been a breakthrough in the way other people should think of how they do their galas and their events to create effective, uh, high-performance collaboration, really. Okay, so for all of you protocol junkies, this oh. one is for you, uh, or really anyone who plans balls, galas, or political or diplomatic events. Or even just a corporate event, all because right. I think that you really need to know this stuff. Well, let's listen. What is the Meridian House? So the Meridian House is both a place physically and an idea. Uh, the place is uh, a beautiful um, Beaux-Arts mansion on a hill in Washington about a mile from the White House that was designed by John Russell Pope, who also built the Jefferson Memorial and National Archives, that was a private home for an ambassador who returned uh, from Europe and uh, who lived here. And in 1960, this place became a, an institution when uh, the State Department and civic leaders uh, realized that there needed to be a gateway to America for international visitors, leaders from other countries during the Cold War. The American Council on Education uh, and a place called the Washington uh, International Center realized that they, there were so many of these programs that had been created, but there, there really wasn't a, a place, a headquarters for them. And so the Ford Foundation uh, came up with a grant for the acquisition of this house, which was originally home to five or six different uh, international organizations, uh, all of whom have, have graduated. Um, and then the Meridian International Center, as we're now known, is really the, uh, the evolution of that. There were about five organizations that were here, including one called THIS, T-H-I-S. And this was the Hospitality and Information Service to, that took care of diplomatic families. At the same time, it was the emergence of the African nations wanting embassies in Washington. But they didn't know, in most cases, how to function in this thriving city. So this is a very practical thing. Very This was indeed. not a big pie-in-the-sky idea. This is really practical. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. It the, was to meet a demand. Yeah. It was a question of getting the children into English into American schools. It was a question of teaching the women how to cook on gas stoves, electric stoves. Diplomats that are coming here that don't really have a clue of how that's, it's done in, that's in the correct. art culture. That, and English conversation classes were the most highly attended. So it was a very, very needy, and it filled the needs 
of so many. And the embassies were very, very grateful mm -hmm. to have this assistance. The, the Meridian House Foundation, of course, developed a uh, identity and uh, funds were raised for the organization um, beginning with Jane's great vision in 1969 to you know, create the first Meridian Ball. So the original, well, tell us the story about this original ball well, and why, <laughs> what the strategy was to get people to sign up for being one of your constituents, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I was very involved with the Nixon campaign and as and the inaugural and as a result I got to know most of the cabinet wives particularly and they also served as advisors particularly Adele Rogers at the time she would come and meet once a month with the diplomats and she'd exchange her point of view I remember um Mrs. Dean Rusk also coming, and she would read to them about the life of Abigail Adams. But Adele was very interested in continuing a good rapport with them. So uh, with that piece in mind, and they're enjoying their exchanges, uh, I lived not far from the Saudi Arabian embassy. And we became great friends, I have to tell you, through uh, my very bad dog by mm -hmm. the name of Magpie. Because she would mm -hmm. trot around and go through garbage cans every Tuesday. And she'd be brought back by several people, including someone from the Saudi Arabia. Our children were the same age, and she complimented me on the programs that this was doing. How did the first ball get started then? Like, what was the right, impetus I'm, for doing that? The reason was, uh, the Saudi Arabian ambassador said, wife said, anything we can do for Meridian House, we'd love to. We'd love to give a dinner party, whatever you think would help you. I said, well, we do need to raise some funds. Consequently, in the same time period, I was having lunch with the daughter of Erwin Laughlin. Gertrude Chandler had just come on to the board, and I was happily reminiscing with her from, a, from with some of my other trustees, one of whom was Harold Fangboner, who went to Gertrude's coming out party here at Meridian House. Mm -hmm. Consequently, I thought, I said, wouldn't it be nice if we could do another dance here. And here the Saudi ambassador is very interested in helping us. I wonder how many others. So there were a few others I talked to, some of the original dinner hosts. The well, why don't you go back and say what the strategy is of the, of, what is the event the now? Tell us what the so event is now so people out there listening can understand the, what it is today mm -hmm. and how it started. Well, it's very much the same with more additions to it. Uh, it what turned out to be one of the first uh, benefits ever done with the diplomatic corps and the, Ameri and the Washington community. Prior to that, we had three separate communities. We had the old Washington, we had the Hill, and we had the diplomatic corps. Very hard for them to interchange. Uh, they had to rely on meetings set up by then uh, Sabia Sakasa. So I thought and I went to the board and I said, I have an idea I'd like you to consider. We have embassies that would like to help us. They will give dinner parties. Gertrude Chandler would love to see her coming out party done again. Do you think so I went, I was asked to come and meet with the executive committee. Now remember, this is the 60s. I presented my idea. I was then asked to remove myself that they would, it would be discussed and they would get back to me. This was not an era of a board that had many women on. Matter of fact, very few. Consequently, everybody in that executive committee Thought, let's try it. Well, with this magnificent home, uh, it was a natural. 
And then I started putting a committee together. What was different about the first year? Committee by two by twos by twos. We had lots of single couples coming, all of whom had always wanted to be in the building. Many supported certainly the reasons, some, and what was so wonderful, the Nixon cabinet at that point came out. They each went to a different embassy for How many dinner. embassies were in the first year? 24. 24. And what were the sort of the, the marquee ones? Uh, Great Britain, France, Spain, Italy, uh, Thailand, uh, and there were two from the African, I guess it was Tanzania. I can't remember. That's okay. Rest. Now, what about today? How many are embassies are there today? So there, this year, I think there are about 35. Uh -huh. um, and we, uh, one of the additions I think that Jane was going to mention was the ball has become so popular that in addition to the embassy dinners, there's also a dinner held here um, that was originally started as a young in the 80s, I think, mm -hmm. called the, the White oh. Meyer Dinner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and they uh, they dined together uh, in, in the White Meyer House, which is our other house, which was the home of Catherine Graham uh, and, and the Meyer family. Um, and, and so, uh, in increasingly, um, the embassies, of course, have, you know, thanks to the foundation that was laid, they've, they've always been there, um, for, uh, for Meridian, but people come here at about eight thirty nine 9 o'clock. After they have the dinner. After they have the dinners. Dinner start around 6 or 6.30. Right. And one of the things that people like, I think, about the Meridian Ball is today there's so many speeches and you're in a hotel ballroom and you have to sit through oh yeah this a is lot a, of this stuff is a, this is a fantastic model yeah so all of the all of the content about why we're doing this is done actually in the smaller dinners right and then there are toasts that are very right. carefully well, tell us about the strategy around the toasts this is the exchange in our meridian house thanking those that are helping us continue with services to their embassy personnel it's a lovely exchange. Uh, well, toasts are a lost art in general. Exactly. And I keep saying to everywhere I go that, you know, I grew up in Washington, that mm -hmm. this is one of the most unique things about mm -hmm. Washington is how people were right. able to be and so articulate. So at these many events. that give toasts have been to the countries yeah. where they're having dinner and have nice, warm reminiscences. And that's a nice thing for the ambassador to then hear. It is also so helpful to them. Oh. If it's not meeting with a cabinet member, it's meeting with someone on the Hill. They have quiet times during cocktails to talk about things that are of concern to them. So we serve good purpose in helping well, communication. You serve a a much city. bigger purpose than you think. There's a guy by the name of Sandy Pentland who is a professor at MIT that has written a book called Social Physics, How Ideas Flow. And he says that the probably the most important event would be a six-day cocktail party in Washington mm -hmm. where people talk to each other and they can get stuff done. Planning an event and wondering how you can give your attendees the best experience possible Take advantage of customized meetings with Hilton that make it easier than ever to incorporate health, wellness, and great breaks. Hilton will help you build an extraordinary meeting that attendees will remember. To book your next meeting or event, go to meetings.hilton.com. I, I just wanted to key off something Jane said in the beginning about the different communities in Washington, the members of Congress, the diplomatic corps, I guess, would you call Washington establishment? Mm -hmm. And now there's, of course, business, right. which today uh, is a much more, a bigger part necessarily of Washington life. Um, of, of the, of, which we didn't have. Which, which we didn't have. And, and so I, I would say that that gathering, you know, Meridian is, is studiously neutral. Um, our agenda is in bringing that social fabric together. Mm -hmm. And so no matter who's in the White House, uh, we have Republicans and Democrats. We have, you know, people from countries that are in conflict with one another, but coming and meeting here. And then you have these these terrific Washington uh, leaders who, um, whether it was, you know, the Georgetown set or the Calorama set, or now it's, 
you know, young entrepreneurs who live down on the wharf. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but Washington's changed a lot, but they still, there's still a need for a place to gather where people feel they don't have to um, change the way they think, right. but they can hear from somebody else. Yeah, yeah. But they're all people of the somewhat the same caliber that have an idea that they need to feel the need to promote. Yeah. And spread. Yeah, well, I think and that spreading ideas is the kind of the key. I mean, I call what you guys do your collaboration artists. Yeah. And if if, if I could just make sure. one other point, which is, so the the ball uh, now it's fiftieth year is the expression, the highest expression of what we do. But throughout the year, those programs and those communities are brought together right. in all of our programs. Right. So this is really to celebrate that and to obviously support the organization, but. But it's not a one-off. We we do this work. This is just day to this day. is just yeah, a demonstration yeah. in a more public way. Correct. Of what you do. What is the business model for the event? It looks like you can raise. I mean, our people that are interest, are interested in organizing. Sure. So you, this is a way that the embassies actually pay for their own events. Correct right. or no? That's right. So That's this right. is one way of feeding a lot of people and sort of distributing the costs so that the organization, mm -hmm. the That's nonprofit, correct. can really right. uh, in the first benefit. years, as it turned out. Uh, there was a designer called, named Donald Brooks who very much wanted to get involved with Meridian House. Well, he, he, Donald Brooks said, can I please come down and see your institution? Of course you may. Uh, and then he said, you know, DuPont is making a new fabric called Kiana. I bet they'd be interested. So we had a collaboration between DuPont giving us some money, providing the fabric for Donald Brooks, who made dresses for several of us. And in order to promote this first ball, remember there were not many balls. Yeah, this was in 1960. City. What yeah. year was this? 60. We started in 68. 68. And that was a turbulent time in America. <laughs> uh, so consequently, uh, this worked. And we gave a fashion show of Donald Brooks clothes here at Meridian House to announce that we were having this party and what the reason was behind it. So it became a nice trade-off for them. They gave us our seed money. Uh, we had a raft of volunteers. We had hands-on volunteers. How many people attended the first ball? Uh, about 300. 300. How many people attend them today? About 750. 750. And is the, what was the price of the first one, and what is the price of today? I don't recall the 50, price of the first one. $50 a ticket. And $50 a for a full meal at an embassy. That's correct. And then correct. a dance here. That's correct. And now I think it's something like 650 That's pretty cheap, actually. Is it? Yeah. yeah. This, oh, yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, that, that, 1000 to 1500 Oh, yeah. I, you can get much more than that. Mm -hmm. The uh, Just... just you ask about the sort of the model, and one thing to point out is that uh, the tradition is that the the first lady is always, you know, the honorary chair. Um, the chief of protocol is another honorary chair, and then there are congressional chairs: a Democrat couple and a Republican couple, and that model has stayed constant forever. Yeah. Forever, and then you know, more recently. There's obviously, you know, usually a civic leader who is uh, the, the ball chair and helps organize and uh, decide what the look and feel of the event would be and what kind of food should be served and all of that. And uh, and since uh, probably the you know mid '90s, now there's a, a corporate chair. Now that person it may just be as Dupont was in the beginning, a corporation that is interested in. Um, being a global citizen or showcasing themselves to the diplomatic corps. But of course, uh, that in terms of uh, the business model provides um, a really important foundation financially right. so that the cost of the event can ma be maintained. How about the, um, the repeat customer of this? Do you have a following yes. so that this is like a sold out like in a minute? I certainly did through the first 10 years. Yeah. Because I then became mother to the ball. Yeah. And I chose the chairman and so forth. Yeah, really. And they came back and returned and returned because, because it was returning, such fun. The, well, returning, uh, we're finding that the, that the, there's all this theories about familiarity and familiar faces mm -hmm. that actually makes it so that they become more effective from a social physics perspective. Right. We, we, we do have, oh, I'm sorry. 
No, I was just going to say, we made it fun. Yeah, well, fun well. Is, is something that people are afraid to admit that they'd like to do. <laughs> we did the first year. We hand-delivered invitations. And we had teams of our volunteers going around. We then put fortune cookies in with the invitation. And that became fun. <laughs> then uh, one experience was we were saluting the African countries. And we had a wonderful tent with African music all draped in a leopardy jungle print. But the one day uh, that we needed to pick up the stuffed animals, the giraffes, the lions, all of the courtesy of Saks Fifth Avenue, we were driving in a convertible. My daughter was quite young then, car holding the neck of the giraffe in the convertible. And so here our beautiful linden garden turned into our jungle setting. Mm -hmm. And it, it was fun. It was just fun. That's fantastic. I would say one of the things, so my predecessor, uh, Walter Cutler, uh, and his predecessor, John Hova, um, you know, were uh, part of really, I think, uh, you know, continuation of the ball in terms of what it represented. Uh, and we uh, have tried to preserve those things about the ball that make it special. But obviously, things... Uh, we've had to navigate as you try to appeal to all generations. Yeah. How, have you, how have you changed well, this? Well, the, 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 you know, the, the, uh, thing that we uh, have, have tried to, to do, um, is have different places within the ball that really appeal to different generations of people, but we want them all to be together, but we've tried to have one musical area that, you know, is for dancing that might be more, you know, traditional waltz or samba or that kind of thing. And then the, we now have this tent, which has become very popular, which is more contemporary uh, music that people want. And that's, in fact, a DJ. So we've had everybody from, you know, Peter Duchin and the Michael Carney Orchestra to uh, the hottest DJ in uh you know, from the French Riviera yeah. that some ball chair, yeah, that a ball chair wants now. to bring yeah. in and, yeah. and, and have. And, and the DJ is now an artist, which oh, yeah. is a new, oh, which is a new totally, thing. Totally. Uh, and, and so, uh, navigating that is, is, uh, you know, making sure that we have something for everybody is important. First impressions matter at special events from opening a beautiful invitation to a fast and friendly check-in at the door. Everything your guests experience makes a difference. Skipster is the event software that is built for creating first impressions that last. Visit their website at zkipster.com to try it out. That's zkipster, Skipster, to try it out. We're now in the age of the experience. We're in the golden age of experiential. And you know, just going to an embassy for many people is like the most unbelievable experience you can get. So you have built Correct. in experiential to this. Absolutely. And, and the, some of the residences, um, are extraordinary. Uh, as Jane knows, um, you, you mentioned, uh, uh, some that aren't uh, as obvious, but you know, places like Peru, which has the largest piece of real estate in Washington for an embassy. I mean, everybody knows about the British and the right. Italians and the French, but the Thais, the Indonesians. Um, right. There's some amazing buildings yeah. um, that uh, uh, have, in their own histories, amazing. And so you have that experience first and uh, a chance to mingle with a dozen people or right. maybe 15 or 18 people. Uh, and then, you know, you come in here. Uh, and the other thing we've had to navigate, again, is, uh, you know, for example, the receiving line. Uh, which is a tradition, um, n you know, nowadays some people want to, and through protocol, you know, dictates they should wait in the receiving line, but other people also want to just get in. So there are these logistics, there's a, behind the, I should say this, behind this work, originally the work was all done by the volunteers and the ball chair. Everything from collecting the checks to planning every, uh, you know, minute detail of this you ball. My dining room table. Exactly. And, 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 uh, with people now being so busy and having, you know, especially the kinds of people that you want to, 
be leaders of your organization, the staff has had to do a, a lot more of the but, work. But hasn't, uh, just like I used to say that people in the event business were sitting at the children's table for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and now they're not. Right. So as the board, you're taking this more seriously, you and your, yeah. your board people. I mean, this is a serious. Socialization is serious. Yes. Um, and, and talk about when you have these dinner parties, how are you, um, what is the format for them? Are you doing Jeffersonian style dinner parties? Like yeah. what is the collaboration technique so, to get and people we to do, talk to each other? Right. So we, we do, I mentioned, I'll come back to the ball in a sec, but we, one of the most popular formats for a program here at Meridian throughout the year is the salon dinner and our table in the, in Erwin Laughlin's dining room underneath the great, you know, 17th century tapestry is, uh, that's a table, 30 people at one table. Uh, now, that's a lot of people, but uh, usually there's a guest or a, a person who is the catalyst for facilitator the Facilitator type of person? Yeah. Like well, there's a facilitator. I end up doing that on occasion. But there's also the person who is either the visiting foreign minister or the newly arrived ambassador or the secretary of commerce or whoever it is. And, and, and so they will give opening an opening kind of observation about the way they currently see things. And then we will go around and get everybody's contribution about what they think about the issue. And what we try to do is to have always different sectors represented. So uh, there may be some members of Congress, there may be some uh, diplomatic representatives, some business representatives, some U.S. government representatives, and each of them is interested in hearing from the other. Right. So I, I'm a big believer. I use Jeffersonian sale dinner parties all the time, especially before a conference. I always have a Jeffersonian dinner party before, and the speakers speak better the next day. But the big issue with doing that is you have to be aggressive in interrupting them to keep it going. You do. How do you? What do you? You're you're a collaboration <laughs> artist. Well, I. How do you actually do it? So so I I am uh, was a diplomat at the United Nations, uh, and one of the things that um, I have sort of as you did at the UN when somebody went on too long is very respectfully uh, begin to try to, you know, thank them for their observations and uh, give time for the others to... How do you do that? Present. What is the technique? What is that technique? To well, do? there's... Because our people are interested and I'm interested So there's... In there, there, there's... Like you have, the, the very... Like we have in a cocktail party is always right. have a glass half empty so right, you can right. always get the a very, drink. Very, <laughs> the very first thing you do is it's, it's, is, is it's good... Um, groundwork at the outset to tell people that they may be called upon. So you're, you're basically setting them up as this is an opportunity that may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we tell them that, you know, we, we, you know, we really want to hear from everybody. So you try to set the stage. Um, then, you know, they're, they're obviously uh, physical, Eye contact that you that you make, the, to, and you the like nod, the eye rolling thing, the, like the nod, the appreciative <laughs> nod, and then if worse comes to worse, there's always the napkin note. You know, oh. you gently just write down the napkin a, note. I've the napkin heard note, that one. Uh, well, or I should say, if it's a formal dinner, it's probably a note on a uh, a coaster or something. It just says uh, two minutes. And, and that's the gentle and, way. Yeah, and, and then if somebody doesn't get it after that, you know, um, we just, uh, you know, might move on. <laughs> but you have to be aggressive in terms right, of that. Right, but, but or, it, or else, yeah. I, I had to uh, stop two secretaries of state. They were having an exchange in front of a goodly number of diplomatic corps. And uh, I slipped them a note. I stood right next to them, hoping to catch their eyes. No, they were really in they just go at it? They don't discussion. even think that someone else is there. Yeah. The and this was very hard. I finally had to say, excuse me, gentlemen, we have the, to the, end. The, very, the champions uh, of this are wonderful elected members of our Congress. Okay, they'll go on forever. They, yes... They, um, they, they have a gear that they can get into, and, uh, and it's obviously what got them to where they are. Um, but, uh, you know, the politicians like to speak and hear themselves talk, and, and, uh, and it's, they're very important. But it's What else do you see? Okay, so we have we've, we got the speech problem. This is a very practical issue. What about the manners piece? Do people know how to, like, I, Vicki Bagley taught me roll with the roast, 
Do you know mm-hmm. that thing that, that you always talk to the person on this side at the dinner party, yep. and then when the rose comes, you talk to the yep. person on that side? Right. Do people know how to do that today? Are you seeing that these the social graces at a dinner party in an embassy, are they there for the new people, or do they have so, to be taught? So I think um, for the most part, most people have good manners. But if you're invited, if they went to St. Albans and if they went to well, <laughs> well, 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 but it, but nowadays, you know, if you're inviting people because of what they do and not who they are, right? Uh, the world has changed, and you have many young people in positions of very senior responsibility. Um, you have people from outside of Washington that have come here, and they may be a deputy assistant secretary, or they may be a chief of staff for a congressman, and. They've never been exposed to this kind of dinner party before, right? In many cases, they'll drink the water bowl, the finger bowl. <laughs> I wouldn't go that you far. You saw the booth. I lived it. Yeah. So, so um, I, I think you know, to a certain extent, for some of them, this is the first time, and some of them are some of them are in awe yeah. of being in, a, at a function like this, and others will, you know, whip out their cell phone. Is that like, the, and is that now the ultimate no-no at a I mean, if you, oh, I, I mean, to me, that seems like you go to a, one of your, your dinners at an, at an embassy and you whip out your cell phone. No, it, it, that's it, the it, worst. It, it's not appropriate. Uh, there are occasionally exceptions. Right. And what it are those? It depends who, well, <laughs> if you've got them. Somebody yeah. who said, who, for example, we, when we have members of Congress or senators coming, they may have to go vote. Okay. So they, so they have to go back to their, you know, to the Hill and go vote. Uh, we did, I just had a, I had a, um, event, uh, not too long ago from, uh, with the ambassador of, uh, I believe it was, uh, Columbia and, uh, Rex Tillerson had resigned, uh, while we were in the, oh, yeah? the, while we were at the table. And I, of course, I just had to show him because he needed to know and, not 30 seconds later that his phone rings and it's the president of his country calling to ask him what's going on. Uh, you had <laughs> to take that call. So what about, okay, what about social media? So when is it appropriate to, you're, you, you walk into this beautiful room, like at all of our events, the people are like taking pictures of the event. Do you, is it, is it a good, is it okay to take a picture of an event, the room when you walk into it? Now, or is there is that against the new rules of today? Well, we have two types of events. Um, we have you know receptions where we want social media nowadays. If there's a, an interesting speaker or there's somebody that's doing something meaningful, we you know the more of that the better. I, I think obviously at the dinners you know that are more formal, um, we have a photographer, um, and so we share those pictures and we usually write up you know, a little piece about what happened at the event. What we try to do is draw out like chat, you know, Chatham house. We're trying to develop our own Meridian house rules, right? right. What are they? What's well, that's the what we're trying to get to here. Exactly. But when you go to your benefit though, and you got a new person, are you, is there sort of like, is there, you, would you, would it, is it wrong to go take out your camera and take a picture of the room at the ball at no, at the, at the dinner parties? Oh, uh, yeah, put your mask on. Yeah, I think it's rude. Okay. <laughs> Do you think it's it depends rude? on the event? Yeah, like a like a, a, a you walk into some of these embassies and they're so amazingly um, photogenic, right? That you want to take a picture. Then, in that case, you, you ask do. whether you, you, you ask. ask. So that's the rule. So yeah. Jane is the rule is you ask whether you can participate in mm-hmm. social media, and then also, do you think that there is a rule about photographing someone else and asking them uh, at, when you yeah. go to a dinner party? I just went to the uh, state dinner for President Macron at yeah. the White House, yeah. and I was I, the last one I'd gone to was when President Bush, forty three, was president, and there wasn't anybody taking any kind of pictures at that dinner. And this last one, uh, people had everybody had their cell phones out, including very you know important, famous people, bullface names down from New York, and all this. So it's changed. It's a changed a lot. Bit. Yeah. Change a lot, but it's it's definitely a whole different world. Let's go into what you what conversations at an event. I'm moving in sort of the direction of like these are your kind of rules in a sense. Like what are the conversations that you can't have anymore, and what can you have? Can you talk about religion? 
like the, the old rules? We, or what are the we, things we, that you want that think people should, just in your own world that people should stay away from or talk well, about? Well, I have to say that at, at Meridian, the whole idea of the place is, everything, is everything. there's no there's nothing off the table. Well, that's a good point. And so that's kind of what the role we play, but it's respectful. Right. And uh, it's it's in a different, it's not cable news screaming at each other. What happens at one of your events when 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 people do get heated in this sort of hyper sensitive area of the world uh, that we're living in today. How do you what is your technique for calming things down because it happens I assume. I think because everybody knows that they're there for the purpose yeah. of exchanging right. views and ideas. Generally the it's self-policing. Right. The, the other people, we don't have to do anything. You don't have to do it. But what about other the, guests? What about the dinner party other at the ball? It's still the same thing. So these, so the people that are coming are pre-screened in a sense. They know that these are certain rules. Yeah, and you always, you know, you'll always have somebody who, yeah. you know, skirts the rules. But by and large, everybody's very, you know, right. And and again, it's a celebratory, festive evening. Right, right, the ball. That's right. Right. What about um, dress? Like clothing now, I mean, we're, look at us. It, the old executive directors of this would never be caught dead without a tie and a suit and everything else. Yep. We're in jeans and we're like. Well, it's so, casual Friday. I'm, I wear a suit every day. You do? Okay. Yeah. But is in terms of dinner parties and just, I mean, the embassy is black. Is it a black tie event? It's black tie. Uh -huh. It's black tie. And do people actually do black tie at, at all these events now in your events? Or is it sort of quasi black tie? Well. Cool black tie. Meridian will not change that because right. part of what we you know, um, what makes Meridian Ball special is, is it, it is, it's current, but it's also like stepping back into right. a very elegant. In fact, I've heard, um, not to toot our own horn, but with the Corcoran Ball, you know, the demise of the Corcoran Ball, the White House Correspondents Dinner and all these things that it's sort of the, one of the last great, you know, balls mm -hmm. around. And I have heard that there is a decline in Washington of black tie of, of, of an interest in black tie events. Well, but just like, you know, um, certain things that don't change as long as it's a flight to quality and there's a couple of them left. Right. There's a, that you're going to there's, there's, there's an appetite for it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I like when I'm wanna, very glad to hear that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think people like to get dressed up in that, in that, mm -hmm. in that way. In New York, I don't. I, I, when I was living here, people thought I was a Mater D. Well, we we, <laughs> we added it. We, you know, it's interesting. I, I um, of course, have just have to put on a tux, which is pretty easy yeah. at this point. It takes about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's but not a big deal. I do remember um, we've added an event the morning of the ball called the Global Leadership Summit, which is where we have a substantive discussion about a global. People issue. are coming in anyway, so you're yeah you coming in anywhere, and, we, and and a lot of people. One of the challenges we had to the ball is people would say, "Oh my God, this is an amazing event! We had such a good time." What are you actually? What's the? What are you doing here? Right. What's the? Right. What's the? What's the mission? So we did add this. It's of course it's not all the people that are coming to the ball, but it's it's a good number. And we've had people like, uh, you know, we've had David Rubenstein interview, uh, you know, Fred Smith, the chairman of FedEx, and we've had members of Congress and others. Um, it's a very good event, but. The interesting thing is I didn't realize, you know, when we were looking at the timing of it, because it's in the morning, I said, well, you have to end by, you know, noon. And I said, well, why? I said, well, people need time to get ready for the ball. And I didn't realize that there, there, there are people in, you know, and it's wonderful, but who are viewing this as a very special occasion where they have to go get ready. And there's a whole process of that. Mm -hmm. Or they have to take a nap. And they have to take a nap. They have to get their, the, the hair. They mm -hmm. have to, uh, you know, make sure that the, the dress uh, fits and uh, the whole thing. And it's, uh, it, it's kind of fun. You know, it's so funny in New York, I now know a lot of brands that actually style their attendees at events and they pay for their hair and makeup and clothing and everything else. So when they go to an event, they're perfect representing right. the brand. What I love to hear, I, uh, you know, uh, what's fun for me to hear and uh, kind of a indicator that the ball is still, you know, successful or popular is, is um, my wife or a friend of mine or somebody that works here will, will be at, you know, uh, at a hair salon or somewhere, and they'll say, "Oh, everybody was there." Uh, yeah, yes. all, the whole row of, of eight chairs were all people getting rid of the wall. And I said, "That's kind of well." There's something unique. about that. That there's something about the ritual of this uh, mm -hmm. of this having an annual event that people really care about. Yeah. It becomes a festival, you know, for people. And uh, those that come back feel very comfortable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So are there, is there anything um, that you want to change about this, uh, this event or just in general about how you see the collaboration aspects of what you're doing? Uh, yeah. Can you extend it? Are there extensions to it? Uh, is there, uh, the other question is, is there a flight to substance for these yes. galas that you need to add things to it? I don't know that, I think the ball works because uh, it doesn't force anybody to do anything. Um, right. But what we have tried to do, and really I think what what is important to do is make sure that all of those people who come are part of our community throughout the year. Right. And that they're invited, and 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 that they're. We have a global leadership. We have a council of people now uh, who are doing embassy events and salon dinners. And we just did one, for example, just a, a few examples. One uh, last week at the Panamanian ambassador's residence on climate uh, it, uh, change and the environment. We did one at the Danish embassy on smart cities. We did one at the. Uh, uh, embassy of, um, sorry, uh, the Embassy of Italy, the residents on uh, creative economy, the creative economy. And each table at these dinner parties, they have a task of a question that they have to then present at the end. And all of those people are now people that have also come to the Meridian Ball. And, they, and it, it's a sort of a mutually reinforcing thing. So if we keep the Meridian Ball celebratory and um, dignified, um, but really, really tell people through the program and the things that they get at the ball, the mission statement, all that takeaway, um, which is increasingly, of course, now, you know, people want digital and follow up and all that stuff. So, uh, but we, we really don't want to mess with yeah, what, no, what, 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 well, what the organic nature of what you're doing is pretty incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. it really is, is viral before viral. Yeah, you know that's kind of the idea. And I'm told that really the procedure has not changed oh, yeah. no. in all these years. Which I no, and the uh, uh, not to open up a Pandora's box, but the the most challenging thing is the seating. Oh, oh my God, seating oh. is oh, tell me about seating. Oh. Okay, well, tell me about. Oh. So let's open up that Pandora's box. So. This used to happen. I'll let Jane talk about it in her in her day. But we have a, basically a command, like a command center room, that has easels. You're doing it the old fashioned way. Of, You're not using social tables. No, 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 no. Of every table. Well, because you know, there's there's first of all, embassies want government people to Protocol. come. Yeah, they 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 want to have people come to make it worth their while. The People who have contributed large amounts of money want to pick where they uh, go. Mm -hmm. And then you have people uh, in Washington who uh, want to be with other people and they want their whole group to be together. Or and then there are people who can't stand to be in the same room with one another. Now, that's not a big group of people. But um, so that is a very del dealing with people's expectations and then if you have uh, in addition to that um some of the embassies you know from the middle east that are very popular but they don't serve you know alcohol yeah. who's going to be okay with that um and I, I do think that the person you, you know you can really tell i have to say one of the things i appreciate um is when people are understanding uh, and you can tell a lot about people about the, when they, the way they handle uh, issues relating to where they're going and where they're sitting and all that. And 95% of the people are thoroughly happy with, with everything. But Is there a category of people that you can tell in advance that are going to be the problem children? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But the greatest faux pas in this is if you assign someone to the same embassy two years in a row oh. or with a year in between, they, nobody likes that. Really? That's so interesting. And you so, do hear. So what happens is the, like, who has the final say over the seating chart? The embassy? Or do you guys? Where's the power? No, no comment. Are you the power? Is it, uh, because there's somebody that's got to make that final decision. Well, we work <laughs> hand in hand with the social secretaries at the embassy who are, who are working with their ambassadors. And I would say that, you know, uh, of course, an ambassador who's hosting a dinner as residents or her residents yeah. ultimately has the final yeah, say. They don't want to mess with it. Um, 
But you can strongly suggest. You can, yeah. We have not, um, uh, we, we've, we've, you know, the social secretaries who we honor each year because they're so Good. important and we bring them together with the White House Social Secretary and the Chief of Protocol. We just did an event. We thank them yeah. because without them, oh, we couldn't do our jobs. Incredible. And we just lost a, a really important one, Amanda Downs <gasps> at the British <gasps> Embassy who retired after 28 years oh. of running the British Embassy's um, she said something like nine ambassadors and uh, how many presidents and all this stuff. But working with them, and it's all about communication. And that's why having the staff who can communicate and understand when something's a real issue or when it can be. And the other thing is sometimes we have to add a few seats. You know? But I would also assume that, that you're bringing them a lot because a lot of these yeah. embassies don't get to have the caliber of people that you get. Well, their own parties and their own dinner parties. I would say increasingly that's maybe not the case, not because our caliber isn't um, very high. It is. But, you know, an ambassador can have their own dinner party. Yeah. But what they, why they appreciate it is, is again, what they get from Meridian throughout the year. Um, you know, we just, uh, we just had Secretary Wilbur Ross here the day the China tariffs were announced and for the ambassadors and they got to talk to them about what is the strategy what are we so that's not just the dinner right it's it's what we do for them throughout the year so go back to the seating again is there a certain how do you is it do you always do try to do girl boy girl boy i mean did we go back to the old-fashioned ways of doing things yes yes is it, it's is it very, very much um it's do you it, look at personalities and who's the talker and who's a quiet person well or do you, uh, I would say, and I'll let Gene comment on this too, but, but, but what, we, what we try to do... Um, Your advice course, to other people that are listening. Well, is we, we go by the protocol, you know, standards pretty strictly. The Green Book type of stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, the order of precedence. Right. So, really the military. So, so we, you know, we, we, we absolutely have, you know, senators or elected members, you know, seated close to the right. ambassador, and we try to have... Um, you know, the, the order of precedence dictate, you know, the seating and we try to not have couples. That's a normal thing. Not like people think seated. couples should sit together, but not at a dinner party. Yeah. Never. They, they, no, don't have realize couples. that that's a rule. And I'm surprised that some people don't. Um, and, uh, and then we do, you know, if, if we have, um, so some of our, for example, uh, uh, we know that, that some of our, uh, supporters, um, would really enjoy meeting, you know, somebody else. And, you know, we do try to have people that are simpatico right. uh, as best we can. How about the order of toast? I think okay. to summarize this, everyone is personally addressed. Right. And we tr try, at least in my era, and I'm sure you continue, to make it a pleasant evening for everyone. Right. There's this concept that I've been promoting in events called intentional humanism that goes against the whole computer things and that you want to Absolutely. be very conscious of what you're doing from a human perspective. It, you know, it is like, I would say, uh, this may not be a good analogy, but it's like painting a painting or cooking a meal. Oh, it's duration. Like, if you do it online, uh, you know, I know David Hockney has some right. beautiful by the numbers. iPad paintings yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the numbers, but it's just not the same yeah. if you need to... Don't have that. Squint and think, maybe this one. You know, James really, said that cur cur it's curating it, yeah. curating the experience. Yeah, yeah. No, and I'm sure you go as far as to have the staff person here say to the social secretary, but you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones have just come back from six months. Mm -hmm. yes. in. And they get, by the way, before the dinner, there is um, one of our staff is there that morning. Um, of course, with the final guest list, which they would have already gotten, but but with biographies of everybody <laughs> at the dinner, particular connections to that country, uh, a gift uh, that will be presented by the toaster at the event. And shout out to. Do you have a to do you have a, your own person toasting, or yes. is it done by protocol? Uh, well, we that's a very interesting <laughs> question. So we try to have both. We try to have the highest ranking person who hopefully has some connection to us. 
you know, uh, be, give the toast. But what is the what is the protocol of a typical toast? That the host will get up. What is the the way it's yeah. done now? The host the gets host. up and thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. Then the ranking. It's person called the gets, response. Yeah, the ranking person does the response, and they're seated right across right. from each other. And okay. And the the toast across, but, and then the person sitting on the left or the right is it signifies a different. Toast. What does that signify? Well, that would be the. The you know, places of important. honor, the most important the kind right of or the left? senior it's people. The right. Right. Uh, yeah. To the right. To the right. Yeah. And, um, and, and so uh, that person will either be a member of our board uh, or, uh, or one of our congressional co-chairs um, or, you know, someone else that's designated that has a particular... And they'll get up and give a toast. What if you just want to get up and give a toast? Is that done in general, not just in, in, in Meridian House, but what I've is... I've seen it done. I've seen it done, too, mm -hmm. but is it proper? <laughs> does it matter? In the new rules, it, I don't think it does. Well, I'm very relaxed. Yes, yes. I think it's a very spontaneous thing yes. that would come through, and yes. Uh, and I think I've seen it where, for example... Uh, some, for example, the executive branch, if there's a senior executive branch person there representing the president of the United States, the member of Congress may outrank that person because they were elected by the people. Right. But they may feel compelled, you know, on behalf of the secretary of state or the president to also give a toast because they feel it's their responsibility. And what about the when when is the appropriate time to do the toast? A lot of people do welcome toasts. Is mm -hmm. that part of Washington, or is that afterwards? What like there's a whole protocol around that too. It's, it's generally at the beginning. Yeah, it's, but the the massive toasts are done at the end. That's right? correct. Yeah. So after yeah. the at the co at the coffee at right the, before the coffee and dessert right. is served. But it, but the host normally gets up and welcomes people. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's no response to that. That's usually later. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes people get up and do responses, and you know that don't know. Right. Especially in New York, where they have right. no idea what the protocol is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you see the like we're, we grew up in D.C., so we know. And then right. Anything goes. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's really funny. But that's what's so unique that's about fantastic. Washington. And Washington is unbelievable in terms of training you to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. so. And I'm. Can I just say one thing? I'm very lucky here. Uh, we are lucky to have two former deputy chiefs of protocol yes. on our staff. Yeah, in the same and, job. And, and, and they, they both have the same job. Right. And they're they're people who've done. Uh, many dinner, state dinners and the White House visits, and so they, they really know how to do it. And you have two of the hardest working people that I ever met at the State Department. They're fantastic. And most charming. And most charming, absolutely most charming. Yeah, Very lucky. Absolutely. So do you have any final comments that you'd like to make about, why don't you also, if you want to be a member, or can you be a member of the Meridian House, how do you support the organization? Yeah. How can you get to go to this dinner if you sure. so wish? wish? So there's, there are three ways. Um, Four ways, really. Um, we have the ball, um, and that's philanthropic support. Uh, we have the Meridian Council, which is an individual uh, group of, of both supporters, but also people who want to substantively engage. Right. We have a corporate council, which is membership by corporation. And those are co corporations that are basically global. Uh, and then the third is we have something called the Rising Leaders Council, which is a great initiative, actually, that's a grassroots initiative. Former uh, daughter of a former um, Meridian uh, ball chair, I think, Clara Brillenborg, and uh, another young woman from Google came and said, you know, there's no place in Washington for under 40s. In the Hill, the, the World Bank, the State Department, and business community get together and network and to create um, share ideas. So they created this Rising Leaders Council um, and, and that's by invitation. So it's not a philanthropic thing. But those are the ways. And obviously anybody who is interested in coming to visit or take a tour, um, we welcome that. What are the price points to get in? What are, how do, how do you, what are sort of like the entry level types I'll, of things I'll that have, you wanted to be? Yeah, I'll involved? have to follow up with you uh, on okay, that. Okay, I'll keep that out. I'll keep um, that out. Okay. I'll have to follow what up about with you on that. How do you, what, what, what is the website and how do we? Yes, do so it? it's meridian.org and all that information is, is available uh, on the website. And uh, um, we, we obviously, uh, I think one of our goals is to get people outside of Washington to be aware of us because I think. Having people um, from Dallas or San Francisco or Chicago or Seattle, for them to experience this weekend 
you know, this ball weekend would be quite magical. And so we, we've added and trying to expand our board and our reach so that this can be a sort of a destination as well for people outside of Washington. I think it's one of the most authentic experiences in Washington mm -hmm. and that it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not glitzed up to, to no. overhype. Uh, like many no other look, things, not on. a lot of uh, uh, brand. You know, it's not, yeah, it's not uh, brand or there's not right, like there's not a lot of right, like, right. It, uh, we 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 try to. It's not commercial, and we also um, don't want to uh, change it so much every year that it, it it has, you know, some different quality. People will like it the way it is. They want to keep coming back to it. Um, so there are little things around the edges that are, you know, innovations, but the, the framework and the foundation is the same. It's, it's a home of intellectual capital. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's what I yeah. experienced over the last 50 years I've known about this. Thanks for that, David. Uh, one thing I think everyone can respect after listening to that is that the founders came up with a great event concept and they've been refining it ever since. They were original, they filled a need, and they have high standards. And the proof really is in the longevity. Absolutely. I think that they, they, they stuck to their, they stuck to the, the traditions and they used the traditions as the guideposts to make sure they didn't deviate too much from that. Mm -hmm. And the story here also, as I was listening to it, really tells the tale of the evolution and professionalization of events. You know, this is from a, a dinner party that was put on by board members and, and volunteers to something that's gone beyond that and is now put together by event professionals. Well, I keep saying that, you know, event people are no longer sitting at the children's table for Thanksgiving, as I said in this. And it really is true that the staff really has taken total ownership. It's not nice, oh, let's just pat the guys on the, on the head and do a nice event. This is a core function of the organization. This is also an event that adheres to protocol. Uh, you know, after all, the, the country's chief of protocol is one of the honorary chairs. Uh, in Washington, that matters. And we can think that it's nice and civilized that there are people and events that care deeply about these traditions. But one of the things that I kept thinking of was, you know, on a certain level, I just wonder, asking, is this proper or what's the right order for toasts can feel at odds with modern society. So what does it add to the, the meaning of the event? Do we really need this or, or is it? Well, I think it is. Antiquated. I mean, pr protocol, protocol is really a guide, a guideline for how people should behave. And I was sort of, I, I love the idea that, you know, what do you do about taking pictures now? What's the new protocol of taking pictures at an event when you walk in? It's not really, the, it's, it's frowned on a little bit. Well, yeah, uh, Jane said it was rude. Yeah. In fact, good yeah. luck with that, by the way. I, I'm not sure that that's one that will stick. Uh, well, I think it will be a case of, of, uh, of society and norms evolving. Although at a dinner party in a private home, just to take out your camera and take pictures is rude sometimes. Getting permission was the way to actually accomplish it properly. I, yeah, a private you, home, an embassy functions not as a private home, though. That, well, that's where I would challenge that. I, I, we can and have I a big debate on and that. And I think that well, there's a, a, also just a lot of curiosity. What yes. are these events about? Yeah, uh, and 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 seeing just what happens and. Um, yeah, so we'll wait, we'll wait and see as the, as the ball comes by, um, what, what gets posted on social media, right? I'll let you know after we go. <laughs> Excellent. So, Beth, what's going on at BizBash? We just announced the finalists for the Event Style Awards. We're thrilled about this, and our editorial team judged these with BizBash's National Advisory Board. And I can tell you the competition was tough. This was not easy to choose. Uh, the, the, the three finalists, ultimately, we will um, will be announcing the uh, winners. And uh, that will happen at BizBash Live New York on October 24th. I'll be announcing those at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, our listeners can see what rose to the top at BizBash.com. It's really phenomenal work from top agencies and brands from around the country, associations, really amazing stuff. So find more information about those and the uh, uh, event itself and register to join us on our website. Great. And before we end, I wanted to thank all the people that made this event possible. Uh, when we think a podcast is an event like anything else, uh, I'd like to thank Claire Hoffman, who is in charge of our content and creating all of the copy that we then distribute. Uh, Re Rebecca Pappas, who distributed the uh, podcast. And not last but not least, Dave Nelson, who is our producer. So thank you all. And what do we say now, Beth? Gather on. Gather on. Thank you. 
Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. So when's the big event? Hilton's here for planners with their exclusive customized meetings. Become a wow maker and save time by letting Hilton help you present an extraordinary event, one that leads to memorable and meaningful connections. Visit meetings.hilton.com and let Hilton help you.